Hi there. I am Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and today we're going to be going over office hours again. So I'm going to be doing these every single week. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you can catch these. What we're going to be doing on this stream is we're going to be going over shots, maybe the shots I'm working on this week, or maybe shots that you send in. And you're welcome to send those to Mary P at borisfx.com and I'm happy to look at stuff for you and we can break them down live on office hours. Today we're going to be talking about tricky tracks and also what to do when things go wrong. So if you have any questions, ask them in the chat and I will answer you. Thanks so much for tuning in and if you're just tuning in, this is office hours and let's get started. So let's talk about a couple of shots. One of the things I get asked a lot is, well, okay, how do you deal with shots that are a little bit non-traditional? This would be a really tricky track. And I think where people would make a mistake here is they would think that perhaps something like power mesh would be a good option for this shot. And it's actually not you're probably going to get better results with a planar track and hooking up a grid warp to that. And you can do that inside of Mocha. So let's talk about that a little bit. All right. So let's track this November 21 page. And you see how it flips? I get asked all the time, how do I deal with that? Well, it's tricky. And it really involves a little bit of hand animation because you totally run out of stuff to track. But we can track a decent amount before we have to start doing hand animation. I'm gonna come over here and type in Mocha. Grab Mocha Pro, drag and drop it onto my timeline. Now, the thing about these shots is something like this can be done in After Effects or Nuke or Avid or Premiere, but in this case, we're just going to run After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and launch Mocha. And once I launch Mocha, it will read my footage off the timeline. All right. So now that I have my footage loaded in Mocha, I can start to track this. I really need to think about this shot a little bit. Well, let's see. Do I want to track this shot from the beginning to the end? No, I definitely don't. Okay, I want to track this shot from areas of the most detail to areas of the least detail. Okay, and that matters. Now, let's come over to the, maybe the middle. Yeah, right about here. I can see that I have a fairly flat lit section of this shot and I can start to track. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm using X splines and I'm not using power mesh. And the reason I don't want to use power mesh is because we've got candles in this shot. We've got a lot of flickering shadows. If you're going to use power mesh, you want to cut down on those kind of lighting interferences because power mesh will pick them up but the planar tracker can read pretty much through them pretty well. Now I say this as somebody who has tried tracking pages with power mesh, and you'll basically end up doing the same amount of hand animation. So let's go ahead and track perspective because this is moving in perspective. And let's go ahead and align a surface tool. Now you notice I am not tracking the whole page. There's a reason for that. I'm tracking one plane at a time, and this is kind of a more severe plane than this one. Now, that being said, I can still attach my grid warp data to this. So let's go ahead and hit track backwards. And you're gonna see Mocha's gonna follow this pretty well, even though it's blowing in the wind. But we're going to get to a part 
where Mocha can no longer track it. And another thing that I end up hearing people ask is how do I track when an object flips and then flips again? And we're going to cover that in this as well. So we're going to let this get to its part where it starts to mess up. And then we're going to use manual track to adjust that. Manual track can be a little bit tricky. It requires that you make sure you have a keyframe before you start animating it. So I'll show you what I mean here in a second. All right, looking good, looking good. Let's see how this works. Okay, any second now. <laughs> go and here we are all right we're gonna hang on Ooh, we're losing it okay so the reason we're losing it is because it's moving too quick all right but this is our mm, this is our last good frame so we're going to look at what the surface tool is do, is doing here and i'm going to switch to manual track and notice how my surface tool changes all right so i'm going to just wiggle this a little bit. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to go into my dope sheet and in my dope sheet, I'm going to delete those tracking points. Okay. Now back in my parameters, I'm going to start hand animating this. So I feel like that's about the middle of my page and there's my corner. Here's my middle and here's my corner. Okay, and notice it's going to try to animate between those two keyframes. So again, I'm going to animate here, move this here. I'm going to move this top corner here, move that there. And we're going to do any tweening that we need to do. Just like this. All right, so we're using manual track to get past this total vertical. And that's because we totally run out of, of, of pixels to track. Okay, so you see how there's just no details left here? Mocha's not gonna be able to track that even on its best day because Mocha tracks patterns of pixels. And if there's no pixel pattern to track, What's it going to track? All right, so we're almost done. I'm going to just take the surface tool and move it completely. And then here we are. And there we go. All right, and there we've run out, we've run out of track. So now let's go ahead and add an in and out point. So we're going to set the layer endpoint there, and now it's gone. Okay, now, what do we do when we turn again? Well, in this case, I would probably track this in two sections with two in and outs. And the reason for that is because I wanna have in and out points. Now, I could animate the track off screen with manual track, but I don't really want to do that. So we'll just start again on another frame. But let's track forwards. And we can keep tracking even when we're in manual track. Track, track, track. And you see it's going to keep making keyframes. And again, if we were trying to use power mesh on this, what would happen is we'd catch all of that lighting. We don't want to catch that light. That light flicker 
is something that Power Mesh would think was great, but that we might not. Okay, so I'm going to delete that keyframe and that one. And I want to say this one. And that's our last good keyframe. So what we're going to do is we're going to hand animate again. So let's just make sure this is exactly where we want it. Okay. And now let's start to hand animate. And again, I'm going to just move my surface tool and hand animate. We found that corner, found this corner. Let's see how that tweens. Mm, not quite, but easier to adjust. Just like this. Okay, that looks pretty decent. All right, again, hand animating. And what we're doing is we're just selling this. So this is going to be our last good frame. There's our out point using our out point here. There we go. All right, so we're just selling this track with the main track being tracked by Mocha. And then we're doing a couple of frames of hand animation to get past the hard part. And we're just going to really quickly, yeah, that doesn't quite look right for that frame. I'm going to jump this here and there. Perfect. All right, so there's our little hand animated turn. So now what we can do is we can go into our insert. In our insert, I can start to make some changes to the surface tool. In fact, actually, let's go back to large motion so that we're not doing anything when we touch the surface. And let's go to our insert. All right. Now my insert allows me to start aligning the surface to the actual page. So let's take the surface and you remember how I said, it's not a real, it's not quite a real curve, but we're still going to hand animate it. Let's see. There's the edge. All right. And same here. We're going to just adjust this to our corners and there's our curve. So now, if I come over here and do like an insert clip, let's do like a logo. Mm. Let's do a grid. <laughs> there we go. So we can see what we're doing. You can see that's my curved track. Now it's not perfect. So how do I make it more perfect? Well, what we can do is we can find our, our good frame that we're going to use as kind of our reference frame. And we're going to come over to our grid warp and I'm going to do a grid warp level one and let's see what that looks like. So now I can see my corners. So now what I can do is I can basically do a hand correction over the top of this. So what does that mean? Well, we'll just come in here. We'll make some keyframes. Excuse me. Let me turn this off. We'll make some keyframes to our points. Wonderful. All right. And so now let's start to see where that goes off and matches again. All right. Let's take our surface tool, turn that off. All right. So let's hand correct this where it aligns, let's just make sure that we have proper keyframes. And you see how I'm trying to find the areas where it's the most correct first and make keyframes there. That's because as I go backwards, I'm going to want to have tweening. So let's go here. That looks pretty good. That 
that looks pretty not good. And as much as possible, you want to not have too many keyframes. So but we might have to have a keyframe on every frame for where it's manual tracked. There we go. Because what we're doing is a little hand correction. There we go. Now, obviously, this is quick and dirty. All right, so this is breathing a little bit. So we're going to make it not breathe by correcting it. There we are. We want it to breathe naturally. We don't want it to breathe in a way that is not natural like this. All right, so there's my edge. I like using the grid tools because then you can see where it's off the worst. And just like everything in Mocha, the principles of animation apply. You're going to want to make sure that you're tweening. And tweening means that basically you're finding your in-between motions. So you, you want Mocha as much as possible to automate the tweening for you based on the track. And then you make your key motion points. And those are your keyframes. All right. And I like to look for the areas of most difference and adjust those. So I can see that this is off. We're going to just adjust that. And you want to make sure you don't have too many keyframes, because if you have too many keyframes, if you have too many keyframes, it'll start to breathe and jitter. We don't like that. But we're still going to have to do some keyframing. All right, and so now the bottom of that page works with the paper and we'll have to do the same to the top of the page on the inside corner. But everything else works pretty good. On this outside edge, it looks really nice. In the middle, it could use a little bit of love. But this is pretty good. We just need to focus on here. So once again, let's find the area of most correctness and then adjust it. And we'll just go between all our keyframes because now we know where the key motion is. And we can just fix our top corner. And it's a visual adjustment. You have to make sure that it looks correct to you. And of course, nothing is going to look perfect while it's nice and crisp. You're going to want to blur it a little bit. We're going to want to make sure that we feather it back in. And we can get away with a lot that way. There we are.
Let's correct this middle bit. Okay. And I know we tried to use Mocha to minimize hand animation. And for the most part, we can. But when an object completely turns like this, there's not much you can do except for do hand animation. So now you just make sure that you correct it in a way that makes the most sense to you. Just like this. And what we want is we want something that we can get away with. So let's zoom out, see if we can get away with it. Let's hit play. And I think we can get away with that, especially if we feather this inside edge. So we could replace this with anything we wanted. And the nice thing about this is we can also blend it in with um, motion blur. So let's go back to our insert and let's click motion blur. And let's take my shape, make it large, cover our text here. There we are. All right, and now Let's add a little bit of edge feathering right here at the edge. And we'll do that by going to our selection tool and we're going to select pick edge. And let's turn the grid warp off. There we are. So we're going to blend this right into the edge of the book. So now if we go here, and we hit render forwards. Mm. Now, if we recover our file, <laughs> oops. We can check our insert tab, turn our grid warp on. Yeah, it looks like it's grid warping, yay. All right, so now let's go ahead and take this save. Let's adjust our shape. Excuse me, turn our surface tool off. And voila, you'll get Mocha to crash. All right, let's go to our edge here. Again, pick edge, blend, save. Let's use motion blur, hit save and close. Let's render it back to our timeline inside of After Effects. And let's go to module renders, insert composite and render and see how that looks. It looks like we did not save our grid warp. Ah, oh, bummer. Okay, well, I'm not going to redo it, but suffice to say, that's how I would tackle that shot. A little bit of hand animation to cover that page turn. All right. 
we'll log that away as a bug report. Okay, so let's talk about some, well, anything y'all want to talk about. If you have any questions, please do make sure you ask them right in the chat, and I will be happy to answer them. Especially if you have anything that you'd like to see that's specific. So if you're wondering, I don't know, how to roto a hand or how to deal with occlusion mats, just ask me and I'll show you. All right, moving right along, let's jump over to something else. Well, one of the things I'm working on this week is we're talking a little bit about what happens when you have footage that is longer than the comp that you're dealing with. So let's say I trim this down to like 50 and maybe 300. Then we go to composition and we say trim comp to work area. And then let's just delete that footage here, drop this in. So a lot of times I will have an AE user or a Premiere user come to me and they've got a comp that looks like this. Their comp is not the same size as their footage. Well, if you try to take Mocha and drop it onto this footage, and then you launch Mocha, what's gonna happen is that After Effects is gonna send the entire clip to Mocha, which is not what we want. Because then when we try to paste our data in, we have a problem. And that problem is that the data will read, and you can see it right here, at like negative 33. That's not what we want. So instead, the way we fix that is we go to layer and we go to pre-compose, okay? And we move all attributes into the new composition. And then you see where it says adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layers? No problem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust that by making sure this checkbox is checked. So now we hit okay. And look, it has trimmed my footage. So now what I can do is I can apply Mocha. Excuse me, apply Mocha. And it will read correctly. It will also export correctly, which is key. So if you apply your masks, it'll apply them properly. So make sure you do that. All right, let's go ahead and delete this. And let's delete that comp. Let's go to layer and let's do new comp from selection. All right, so there's a lot of fun stuff we can do with this kind of shot. And maybe y'all didn't know, but a lot of our effects come with Mocha inside of them. So if I wanted to do like a quick beauty pass, if I wanted to say, let's go to Beauty Studio, only spelled right. There we go. We could either use S Beauty or we could use Beauty Studio. I'm gonna use Beauty Studio. And I'm gonna say, let's go down to our pixel chooser and let's go down to our mat. And we're gonna pull her face color and her shadows. There we go. And we're gonna smooth her skin out. Maybe smooth some of this compression out as well. All right, so let's go to smoothing. And let's say smooth small details. So you see how it changes the lighting on her skin and makes everything a lot more soft? That's great, except for it's also making my background soft. I don't want that. So what you may not know is Mocha is included in all of this stuff. So I can go to my Mocha mask and track and I can launch Mocha. 
And now I can do stuff like just draw a nice big loose shape. And I can say, hey, no, I just track translation. And let's hit track backwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to just focus this shape on her. And we can also soften the shape. So if you have any of the Continuum tools or the Sapphire tools, Mocha's inside them already in most of the effects. And it's usually in Continuum, it's in the Pixel Chooser. And in Sapphire, there's a version of Mocha called Sapphire Mocha. And it'll do things like drive your shapes as well, um, drive your tracking points. And in some Continuum effects, it can also drive points as well. And that's really awesome. So what we're going to do is let this track. And then I'm probably going to hand animate the shape just a little bit. I know this whole thing is about hand animation. And that's because trackers aren't perfect. They follow an object, but they don't always find edges or give you all of the details that you want. So in this case, we're just going to Add these shapes this way and let's hit track backwards. And of course I will have to hand animate around her hat and all that good stuff. And again, if you have any questions, please do ask them right in the chat. So if you are new to this, or if you're just tuning in, I'm Mary Poplin, and this is Office Hours. So I'm the one of the senior product specialists at Boris FX, and I'm here to answer any questions that you have. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you're supported and engaged. We want to make sure that you're able to get the knowledge that you want, out of these. So these work best if you participate in them. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe so that you know when we're doing these. We're going to be doing them every week on Tuesdays, usually at about 1 p.m. EST. If you have any shots that you have any questions about or stuff that you're working on, I'd love to help you with those. Just let me know. I'm going to hit stop on this. Let's hit save and close. And now if I go to my mask, I can feather it quite a bit. And if you look, now we're only affecting her and not the background. And that softens the light on our model without changing all the lighting in our scene. And like I said, this is available in most of the Continuum tools and most of the Sapphire tools. So you can isolate using Mocha. Well, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to move on to something else. Let's see. What is a good shot to go over live? Let's talk about compositing. All right, so this shot. This shot is a couple and ostensibly they're moving in together. But let's say we want to put a, put a message on these boxes. Well, how would we go about doing that? Well, obviously the first, first part of that is tracking. So let's try that. Let's take this and duplicate it. And let's call this moving. All right. Now 
Let's go to Mocha Pro, drag and drop it right onto our little layer here. Now inside of Mocha, we're gonna track this box and we're gonna track it and then put something on top of this box that says moving. So let's go over here, zoom in. And I'm gonna track the front plane of this box. Now notice I'm avoiding his keys and all that mess. Let's grab this, put it here. Now in my head, I interpreted this scene as them moving in together, but I suppose it could also be clearing out their desk. And that's more depressing. So let's go with moving together and let's track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective because this object is also moving in perspective because it's moving towards and away from the camera in Z space. We're gonna leave this, nah, we're gonna bump this up to 50. 50 or 60, there we go. We're not gonna mess with smoothing and we're gonna hit track forwards. And let's see what we get. If we don't want this bouncing all over the screen while we track, we can use auto stabilize and that will stabilize based on our selected layer. It'll keep this nice and front and center in the screen. And if this is locked down, then we know that our track is good. If it starts bouncing all over the place, maybe our track is not so good. And as everything inside of Mocha, the track is what matters, which is awesome because everything in Mocha is based off the track. So you know right away whether or not you're gonna get good results. And I also want everybody to remember, again, your shape is where the track is looking and your surface tool is what the track is doing, okay? That really matters because a lot of folks will think that whatever the surface tool is doing is not related to what the track is doing, but they'll follow the shape. And if the shape has been hand animated to stick on, they think that's the track. It's not. The surface tool is always the track. Excuse me, good gracious. Okay, have some water. So the surface tool is always the track and the shape is always where that track is looking. All right, now, I'm not gonna make you sit through this whole thing. So let's hit stop. Okay, and let's just trim this layer. There we are. So there's our lovely shape. And it looks like it's fitting on pretty well. So now what I can do is I can turn this into an insert. So let's save this and close it. Inside of my module renders, I'm gonna to go to my insert layer. And I have this nice little PNG that I've made. Let's just fit this to the screen so you can see. What this is, is this, this is just literal magic marker I drew on a piece of paper and then I keyed it out. And I didn't really care about making it perfect because I'm gonna use it as a multiply mode. So I don't mind the white being in there. If I needed the white gone, I could do a little bit of compositing to just get black. Okay, now let's go to our moving and let's go to our insert layer and let's select moving.png as our insert layer. Back to our composition, launch Mocha. And here's what I like about the insert tool. I don't have to go back and forth with corner pins. What I can do is I can come over here, let's close this, turn this on, and then let's go to insert clip and select insert layer. And now I can interactively see what I'm trying to composite right inside of my shot. So let's say moving, this right here, that looks about right to me. Maybe right here. 
We're going to save this. And actually, inside of Mocha, I don't even have to composite this inside of After Effects. I can do this right inside of Mocha. I can go to my comp under blending mode. I can hit multiply. I can take the opacity down a little bit. And I can turn motion blur on. So now I can save and close. And then I can go to insert composite and check the render box. And now moving is right on my shot. But I want to do something about this tape. I want to make it look like tape is over the moving. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. And instead of using renders, we're going to launch Mocha. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to put them into the chat and I'll be happy to answer them. Let's take our add to X-Blind tool. Let's draw a shape right around this tape. Let's pull tight. Excuse me. Let's turn, let's turn our transform tool off. Pull tight for sharp edges. Okay, so we're going to turn the gear off. We're going to call this BG track and we're going to call this tape. Maybe tape roto. There we go. We're going to select tape roto and we're going to link it to our BG track. And now I don't have to make any keyframes. I have a lovely bit of roto. So we're going to save this and we're going to close it. And then back instead of After Effects, I'm going to make some changes here. We're going to go to Matte, and we can apply the matte if we like. Let's go to Insert Layer. Go to None, and let's go to Visible Layers. And we're going to turn off BG Track and only have tape roto. So there's my tape over the top. Now, if I go to just screen this, obviously that looks terrible. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to saturation. We're gonna take saturation to zero. Okay. And then we're gonna go to levels. And we're going to bring the black way up. Just like that. And so now I'm going to get my tape over the top. Let's go into my mask here and do a feather of like two. So now we're going to get our tape over the top. I feel like that's still a little bit too much. So let's take this down to about 50. All right. And so now we have a nice composite with the tape over the top and then using the Mocha insert notch, not nodule, the Mocha insert module to render this back to our timeline. And that's all live right inside of our comp. Now, if we wanted to do this in like an editing program, like Premiere, we'd probably use Mocha Pro um, to render the shapes back to our timeline. It's really gonna depend on your comp and what you're able to do. So you'd probably want to render your insert and then you'd want to try to use whatever blending modes you could inside of Mocha if you were in an editing host. There we are. 
All right, well, I have 15 more minutes that I can use to talk about Mocha, so I'm definitely going to do that. Let's see, what else can we talk about? Let's talk a little bit about Power Mesh. Probably not going to do that one because it's a little gruesome. We're going to avoid gruesome. Now let's talk about this one. So this shot, what we have here is we have this piece of paper that's crumpling. And normally this would be pretty tricky to track, but we can use power mesh to track this and we can get all of that squash and stretch. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm probably not going to track the whole screen like I did for the power mesh track itself. So let's jump in here for a second. I'll show you what the power mesh looks like. Let's launch Mocha. As soon as AE loads, there we go. Because we're using the whole screen, it will take a long time to track. And I'm not going to make you sit through that, but I will show you what the power mesh ended up looking like. And then I'll show you how to get there. So let's play this. So you can see that what we're doing is we're tracking all of this warp. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to start where the object was the most parallel to camera largest in frame and least blurry. Now that's hard to do with a crumpled piece of paper. So we did our best guess, which is we started from about the middle where it's opened the most. Okay. And because it's open the most, we're going to get that nice squash and stretch as the paper crumbles just like this. Obviously this is really point heavy. So let's save and let's close. And let's talk a little bit about what this looks like. There we go. Okay. So let's take our original footage and let's grab Mocha again. Now, when you're setting up a power mesh, a power mesh requires certain things. And what I mean by that is that power mesh does not like a lot of little details. So what you'll find is if you have a lot of flickering or you have a lot of shadows or you have a lot of harsh light, power mesh is not going to be a really good option. But if you notice with this shot, it's pretty evenly lit. Now there is a little bit of flicker, but not a lot. Okay. So let's find our most parallel spot. Let's let it tilt up. We want to also find where it's the sharpest. So right about here is where we're going to start tracking. And I'm just going to track this little section here. And let's go to translation, scale, rotation, shear, perspective, and mesh. And you'll see that that'll automatically generate a little mesh for me. I don't want to use automatic mesh generation, not for this. So I'm going to use uniform and we're going to hit generate mesh. And that is way too many mesh points because this is a 4k shot. So we're going to jump this up to like 80, maybe 120. There we go. So now we've got a reasonable, reasonable amount of data be tracking. 
So normally with paper, I would recommend taking the smoothness and cranking it up because you kind of want rigidity, but you don't want a lot of warping. Not for this. For this, we're going to leave it on 50 because the paper is crumbling and that matters. So now let's go ahead and hit track forwards. And you see, it's going to start looking for all these microplanes. So what smoothness is, is smoothness is the planar track. The way Power Mesh works is Power Mesh has a main planar track, and then it breaks that planar track up into subplanar motion. That subplanar motion can either be weighted or the regular planar track can be weighted. If the planar track is weighted, that's your rigidity. If the power mesh subplanar tracks are weighted, that's your wobbliness. Okay, so higher smoothness numbers, more to the planar track, lower smoothness numbers, more to power mesh. And that's a really good thing to know as you're tracking. And so what you can do is you can take this data and you can use it in all kinds of ways. Now, it used to be that you could take this data and you could stabilize it. And then whatever you did to the stabilization, you could destabilize and that would be your power mesh. Well, that's a couple of versions ago now. That workflow was great for paint, but for things like logo replacements or slapping something onto the side of a face, we started incorporating this into the insert module. One of the interesting things about the insert module is I noticed that not everybody always knows when to use the insert module and when to use remove, for example. Insert is when you need to patch something or stick something onto something else like a sticker. The remove module is for when you need to take something out of a scene. Where people get confused is where they don't realize that the solution to their shot is patch for a remove. Because sometimes the best way to get something out of a scene, especially if there's a lot of layers over the top, is start compositing layers over the top of that object. What the remove does is it takes the pixels moving behind an object and then it tries to replace them pixel by pixel. What power mesh is great for is when you need to cover up scars or tattoos or anything like that, or add wrinkles to somebody, take wrinkles away from somebody. The remove is not best for that. Patches are, especially flexible patches. So if we wanted to use this like a flexible patch, we would go right back to that insert module again. I really feel like the insert module is a totally underused tool in Mocha. And I feel like it's because we have all this flashy representation of the remove module. And the remove module is awesome. But the insert module is your patch module. And that's the best way to think about it. So we can now use this power mesh data as a patch module. So I'm not going to make you sit through this whole track. Obviously, power mesh does take time. Now, it is faster than a lot of optical flow solutions that you just have to kind of sit on and wait. What I like about the power mesh is that I can see what it's doing in real time and I can sort of babysit the track. And that's cool because if I need to, like right here, let's select here. All right, let's go to our edit the track mesh. I want you to see something. These two points are not behaving. So what can I do? I can hand animate them. There we go. And you see what that does is that adds a keyframe to my power mesh. So 
Let's go one back. There we go. All right, so I've just basically done an adjust track to my power mesh with some hand animation. Very cool. So now what I can do is, like I said, I can go to my insert module and I can say, hey, let's go to our insert clips and let's just drop a logo right in here. And let's actually go into my track tab real quick. Okay, here we are. And let's just make that, you know, a little bit more true to the actual logo. We want that O to be a circle. We want that octagon, or I'm sorry, two, three. yeah, I'm sorry, hexagon. We want that hexagon to look like a hexagon. All right, back to our insert module. There's a little bit of warp happening, but not a lot because of where we tracked. But now we can come in here we can say insert. We can go to blending mode and do multiply. And you can see our Mocha logo stuck right to our little warp there, but it's not behaving. And here's why it doesn't look like it belongs there. Why not? because I didn't warp the source. So let's go to our main keyframe here. Here we are. And now let's go to grid warp. Let's do a grid warp like level two. We'll really overdo it so that you can see what I'm doing. Obviously, that's a bit excessive, but I want to get the point across. So now my grid warp moves along with my power mesh. Excuse me, not that, my power mesh. So there's a lot you can do with this. You can wrap stuff around people's arms, around people's faces. You can wrap it around products. You can start to wrap landscapes, maybe kind of mess with some matte paintings. But again, it's a 2D solution. So anything you can do in 2D, you can do with this. If you need a 3D solution, you still need a 3D solution. All right, guys. Well, that has been office hours and I really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin. You can email me at maryp at boriseffects.com. And especially if you're having any problems with your shots, if you want me to dive in and take a look and go over your shots in real time, that's a really good opportunity to do that. You can just log in. You can ask your questions in the chat and you can see me go over your shots. So if you have anything that's been bugging you, send it to Mary P at BorisFX.com. And if you have any questions, definitely email me. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you can find us again. And I hope to see you next time.